I was in this family since I was uh, about five years old is when I first arrived. Uh, I'm not their actual like child. I was like kind of uh, rescued by them. Since then, I kind of got to know everyone better and they're almost like my real family now. And it's a bit hard to uh, kind of understand is that like I did not imagine they could do something like that kind of thing because uh, in my head my past family was like the worst there could be and i only like understood that was not true after like what happened last time kind of thing it's going to be a bit hard to heal from that but with time and efforts we'll probably just get through it you want to start by talking about your family that you have now who's in it we have a lot of siblings i'm probably not gonna go over all their names because it's gonna be a lot harder to follow but i have four brothers and three sisters i used to have five brothers and i'm not gonna get into details for now uh but yeah now we're down to four now i've only met you and two of your sisters the hard part comes when i ask about your parents yes I feel like that's the most complicated part to understand of the story because they're not even my real parents when you think about it. So it's like even harder to understand. I knew my biological mom and I'm going to get into details of why I don't like her at all after. From the family that rescued me, which is my actual current family, if I can say, that I never knew their mom at all. I didn't even get much details of what happened. I just kind of knew she's not there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And... They're, well, our dad, he's like the worst person I've ever met, like in my entire life. It's kind of insane to like think he like is horrible to a point where even his own son didn't like matter to him. Yeah. But um, I should like kind of go from the beginning because since I entered that family, like lots of things happened that is like incredibly like stupid and that could have been totally avoided from the start of it. So... I guess first I should say why I got into that family, and it's because when I was born, I was born in uh, Quebec. It was with my mom and my dad, but my dad kind of like was never there. He was mostly a trucker as a job, so I didn't really see him, gonna be honest. I had I saw him like two or three times and I don't remember because I was like one, two, four. Uh, my mom was like the most catholic person you can ever like meet uh she read the bible all the time like when she was done she would start over uh she pretty much could tell you the whole bible like by hand she knew it totally it was a thing of like you wake up you pray you eat you pray you go to your catholic school because she found one for me it was totally horrible but you know it, it was just catholicism at the time it was like a preschool and until i was like four i got into like pre-kindergarten thing so it got much more like it was always praying 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 and if you weren't praying you were like punished by like i don't know many ways as a kid it seems horrible but it was just like normal ones like go in a corner or uh oh you'll just stay here until you behave or you just won't get dinner you know normal punishments that other child can get um i know that when i refused to pray at home because i was angry or something my mom used to like beat me until i, I like would pray or if i didn't she would just beat me till i pass out because i just wouldn't you know i was a kid you know what i mean yeah i, I barely knew how to speak and don't like the first words i learned was thank and god and stuff like that and obviously after a while my, my teachers oh well if i can call them that my like babysitters they realized that i i was bruised and everything and that it was not from like playing or anything and they called the social child service on my mom uh she was taken away by i the police and everything and i was given to like a center uh not of adoption it's like a rescue center for while they place you in a rescue family that's what they call it usually my mom was in prison at that time and she was sick and they didn't know what it was so they decided to get her to the hospital and everything and not long after that she died of uh blood cancer so she's gone for real for real i can't be scared 
that anything will happen. After that, I was still in the center, obviously, because they couldn't let go of a child that didn't have any parents at all. Um, because I didn't say it, but my dad refused to take me in. I was in that center for about a year, and when I was five, I was sent to a family that, like, agreed to take me in. That's the family that everything has gone wrong with because like it was not any better than my past family it was just another like way to do stuff first event that i can remember when i got into that family and everything is when i was in megantic because well like megantic that's where they lived it's an old city okay so don't mind that but there's a rail of trains that goes like in the middle of the city basically and i live like the street uh not next to it but, like behind that one it was a pretty neighborhood it was calm it's a city where nothing ever happens it's that kind of city where everyone knows each other because there's like not many people at all in 2013 so i was seven by then i, I had been in that family for a while there was the stepmom that arrived, she was she was fine. She was just a little strict on some rules, but overall, she was way better than mine. That's how I convinced myself. And I do know that like everyone was really attached to her. So at a point, I thought they were uh, she was their real mom. And obviously, after a while, I found out she wasn't. You know, it was pretty obvious. She stayed there, so I'm guessing I don't know. She took it for her goal in life to take care of us and so that year if some of you know that the train accident happened which is an accident it's in the top three fire accident of canada it uh burned like half of the city i'd say and it killed like 47 people which is quite a lot for a fire accident that day it was around midnight i woke up to the sound of like my fire alarm in my house and just overall the smell of smoke which was like really intense it's like you could not breathe in that house there was a window but all the windows were kind of like isolated for winter kind of thing but we never took that isolating part out so it was like hot all the time and so there was no way of like opening a window and just leaving you know what i mean yeah uh in my room at least because there was one room where I'll get to it, but you'll understand. Everyone was already out, and I could tell because the fire was basically almost at my door. It had reached my house after a while. I was planning to get out, and I remembered that my sister was locked in her room as a punishment because she refused to eat her dinner. So I run there because I'm just like, they forgot about her, that's for sure. Everyone else had gotten out. I burned my whole right side to like a third degree. It was awful it hurted like hell i can't even say i got to her room i broke down the door i was seven keep that in mind so it took a while so she was five she was my sister we'll call her stella for the story when i opened the door she was under a piece of the roof that had fallen onto like her i can say and so i just saw her under that piece of wood and i was like that's too heavy for me but i pulled her out the fire was like almost in the room and by that time it it was horrible. Everyone thought I was dead because it took way too much time and the house was basically crashing down. I took my sister and ran to that one room, which was like in a door connected to her room, and there was the window. It's the only window that you can possibly break with something in the house because the isolation on it is almost totally gone because her how old it was i took the hairbrush and i just like hit the window with it over and over until it broke and then i just kind of got out <laughs> i was cut everywhere because obviously it's glass and i just ran to my family i had my sisters in my arm and i was crying i can't tell you how much but i was seven i'd say it's pretty normal as a kid to cry for that seeing the face of your siblings just so miserable realizing that she's dead too it's like the worst thing in the world. It's kind of like everyone knew she was dead. There was nothing like you could do. It was like too late and everyone knew that. So we just kind of all stood there not really knowing what to do before just leaving the city and going to a hotel further away. That was the first event that I'd say was pretty trauma traumatizing, I guess, as a seven-year-old. Saying it right now doesn't seem like I care a lot for it. 
But it's because I've just gotten so used to talking about it that it's, like, almost normal at this point. It's horrible to say. Yeah. People adjust to their trauma a lot as a way of surviving, because if it hurt as much as it did the first time, every time, you wouldn't want to be alive. Yeah. Are you doing okay? Do you need a break? I'm doing good. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay. We're going to a big skip. It was about started in 2021. We uh, had moved by then, obviously. We were in another city for a while, and it's very like far from other cities. Like the nearest small city you can say that is like close to where I live is like 20 minutes away, maybe. So it's very like far in the forest kind of thing. Uh, my stepmother uh, left her dad after a while. So, like, after the fire accident and everything, like, they just started, like, arguing all the time on, like, basically everything <laughs> for dumb reasons. And so she left him after a while, and he, like, I'm guessing he was really depressed with, like, the fact of losing a child and his girlfriend. So he started drinking, like, heavily every day. Like, all his money, almost, he'd spend it on alcohol and bars and everything so much that at a point like in 2021 to 2022 we like wouldn't even see him in like five days because he would just sleep at bars and with like girls he'd pay i guess to just not sleep with him but you know what i mean so we kind of had to work our way through that like find ways to pay ourselves like the not the bills exactly but some heat in the house and like food and everything sometimes we had to cover up for the end of the month with that which is pretty insane when you think about it because we're kids having to take care of adults job in that year a lot's happened because like like i said we didn't usually see him for like days but when he came back he was extremely drunk and for some reason angry mm, i'm guessing that's alcohol i'm not as <laughs> i'm like like not a professional with that but i'm guessing that can be alcohol problems he came back most of the days and just like either me my sister or even like i don't know i'd say even my brother it happened like once or twice he'd like try start yelling and try to like break stuff and just scare us like by banging at our doors or saying he had a gun and when he didn't he was just really way too drunk for that he usually would like especially for some reason try to get to this one sister we'll call her um i don't know ava and so like, he would especially try to get to her or hit her anything you can imagine but since we knew that we did like everything to like kind of not let him get to her most of the times it worked some of the times someone got injured i know one time he like pushed my brother down the stairs because he wanted to reach my sister. Obviously that didn't pass, you know, he was like sent to the hospital, my brother, and um, he was healed and everything. And we were lucky on that part because the hospital was starting to like almost doubt that something was happening. But for some reason, I don't remember what we said specifically, but we convinced them that it was it was not. And you'll just you'll probably say like, oh, why did you even want to hide that? Like, that's horrible. Why would you like try to protect someone who does that? It seems hard to understand <laughs> when you don't live it, but it's mostly because like he was our only parent left to all of us. And obviously we were all really attached to him. So it's not as easy as it seems to like have to literally tell out someone you love just to protect yourself. It almost makes you feel like what you're doing is selfish. Even though you know when it, you know it's not, you know it's just for your safety, but it's just a conscious thing. Your brain is just like, whoa, you're so selfish. You can't just call him out like that. He's your dad. You know what he did for you? It's just kind of, it's just kind of hard to make up your mind. After a year, it was like roughly the end of 2022. Things have gotten way too worse. We were all thinking about calling him out to the police or something. But Ava, she like was still too attached and she was like ready to do anything to like not get him in jail because she blames herself a lot for their mother that is gone because when she was born she left and so she blames herself and she thinks her dad is upset because of that also so she kind of partly blames herself for the situation 
Is Ava the one that I know? Yeah, Ava's the one that you know. Okay. I don't really want to call her name out, because I don't know what she wants me to say on here. Yeah, yeah. And so it's kind of horrible to just think there's a person in your family where they just don't want to call out someone who's doing them horrible things. But we all kept quiet. We just didn't want to do anything bad or say anything bad that could have gotten someone else like even more sad than they already were, you know? But something happened and we didn't have any option. It was on February 19th, if I'm correct. It was like around 10.35 p.m. We were at our house and our dad came back home from like a five-day not being there and obviously we knew what he wanted <laughs> two of my brothers were home with me and ava our youngest one which is like the youngest of all of our siblings uh, he's 11 by the way her other brother who was 15 my sister who is 15 but he's also it's complicated but he's also our stepbrother in a way and me obviously so at 10 35 he my dad came back ava was with our younger brother upstairs and I was in my room downstairs so was my brother and then we heard the door and I just instantly like messaged Ava telling her like go hide somewhere um and take uh, our younger brother and I could hear like brother get out of his room and just start going upstairs to get my dad like out of the way and so I was kind of getting ready to do that too because I was like, you know, I might as well help him. So as I start to get out of my room, I hear him basically yelling at my brother random stuff that I don't even understand because he's way too drunk and it sounds like whatever shit, you know? And I hear like him to start basically threatening my brother that he's going to do something bad if he doesn't let him access to what he wants, which is... Ava. Then, for some reason, it got really quiet for a good, like, three seconds, which felt like the longest three seconds in my life. And then, I just grabbed my phone and started running up the stairs to go help my brother, obviously. And I, as I was going up the stairs, I just hear a banging, like, a repetitive banging, like, on the table, and a huge, really loud crack sound. Like, a cracking sound. I walk up the stairs very quietly, and, like, I try to peek through, like, the doorway to see what's happening in the, in the kitchen. And I see blood, like, everywhere. On the walls, on the floor, on the table, like, even on the roof, there was some. There was blood everywhere. And I just see my dad, and there's an amount of blood in his hands dripping down. At first... I think he just hit the wall or the table with his hands over and over because he was mad about something. But then I noticed that I don't see nor do I hear my brother. And I just started to slowly get what happened. And I grabbed my phone as quick as I could to call the police because obviously, unconsciously, I kind of knew what happened. I just didn't want to like admit my brain that that is what actually happened as i'm on the phone with the police and they are on their way i see my dad leaving the kitchen to go upstairs and i know it's incredibly selfish but i knew my sister was hiding so i knew he wouldn't find her and i felt like it was more safe that i backed away so i didn't move from where i was he was trying to get in my sister's room because i could hear the banging Luckily, he didn't get it on time, and the police arrived, and they rushed in the house and everything, and, like, that's when you know you're safe. Hearing the siren is, like, the biggest relief ever. So I get out of my hiding spot just to get out as quick as I could from this, like, place, and obviously I didn't have a choice, but I, I saw my brother, and he was dead on the floor. Like, blood was leaking from his head and, like, his neck was, like, twisted. So I'm assuming that's the crack I heard. And police was taking my dad away, so I, I like, my, I saw my siblings coming downstairs. Ava, she came downstairs and her face, like, went totally emotionless for a second when she saw him. And she started crying, like, uncontrollably. 
and just ran to him and hugged his body for, I don't know, it was kind of something, a reflex I'm guessing she had, which was, I'm not gonna be scared to say it, it was totally heartbreaking because she was just crying and kept on apologizing and like saying I'm sorry, like, like to a point where officers were needed to pull her away. It's a different type of pain. Yeah. Would you like to stop here? You did an amazing job. Yeah. Okay. You might think it's poor.